Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the worlds. Wa na'hmaduhu, we praise Him. Wa nasta'inuhu, we seek His assistance. Wa nasta'gfuruhu, we ask for His forgiveness. Wa natubu alayhi, and we repent back to Him. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِنَا عَمَالِنَا We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُدِلَّ لَا وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَا حَادِيَ لَا Whoever Allah guides cannot be, mis- uh, cannot be misguided, but whoever Allah allows to go astray cannot be guided to the right path. We bear witness and we should all bear witness. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashahadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulu. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger and servant. That no one is worthy of worship except for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tukka allahu haqqu tukatihi. Wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believed. Keep Allah in your mind, as you should always keep Him in your mind. And do not die as other than Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further reminds us in the Qur'an when He says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُقُوا اللَّهُ وَكُولُوا قَوْلًا صَدِيدًا O you who have believed, keep your duty to Allah. And fear Him and always speak the truth. Now if we do this, then what does Allah promise us? Because this is a deal, this is a bargain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us, يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا أَذِيمًا That He will direct you to good and righteous deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, they are the ones who have achieved a great success. Today I wanted to talk about a verse in the Qur'an. The verse comes to us as a dua. And this is a tool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us when we're on our last leg, when we have nothing left to give, when we have given our full effort and that last test on that, that last question on that last test is just too hard. Right? When that last assignment at work is just too much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tool in the Quran where we can make a dua to Him. And that dua is in Surah Qasas, verse 24. faqir. <laughs> My Lord, I am truly in need of whatever good you can give to me. Now this dua was actually asked by a prophet. It was asked by Prophet Musa And we know the story of Prophet Musa But we should take some lessons from this particular incident. This particular incident shows us how quickly things can change in our lives. Shows us how we can come from the lap of luxury. What was Musa al-Islam? He was the prince of Egypt, right? He was the adopted son of Pharaoh. And he was living it up. He had the palace, he had the nicest clothes, he had probably had the best chariots, the best rides, the horses. He was living it up in the lap of luxury. But how quickly do things change? I mean, you saw the seasons, how quickly they changed. Just now, right? Last week, we could have been on a beach. This week, we're buying winter hats and gloves. Sometimes in the stock market, things change quickly. Sometimes in our businesses, things change quickly. Sometimes we're writing a test in math class or in science. And we just aced the last question. We got, a, we got it for sure. It was so easy. And we go to the next question and we're... Is this written in Greece or something? Or can't even understand what the question is saying. That's how quickly things change. Musa al-Islam is the prince of Egypt. And he sees two people arguing, fighting. 
So he interferes in their fight. And he happens to be a really strong guy. One of them he knocks dead. The next morning he comes back out. Two people are fighting. He tries to interfere again. And the one he helped just last night, just last night he helped a guy. That guy says, are you going to kill me like you killed the man last night? Suddenly another man comes running from far away. Musa, they're talking about you in the courts. Musa, they're going to kill you. Get away from here. So Musa salam starts walking. Now, <laughs> walking out of Egypt isn't easy, right? It's not like we walk sometimes for a nice long hike here, right? Walking out of Egypt, once you leave a certain corridor of the Nile, you are in the desert. And you should be prepared. You should have camels and supplies. And Musa salam had nothing. He walks into the desert and he starts walking without preparation until his sandals wear off and he has to throw them away. And he keeps walking in the desert until his skin on his feet wears off. And he keeps walking until his lips are so dry that he can't even breathe. At that moment in time in our lives, if we are facing such enormous difficulty, we don't even make dua, right? It's just a dua, a, a tamanna, a feeling from the heart that, Oh Allah, please help me. Allah, please provide me something. At that moment in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides him a situation. The situation is two people need help. There's two women and they can't get to the water in the well because a whole group of men is trying to hog the water. Now what would we do? Most of us don't stop to help someone on the side of the road. He's got a car problem, we just drive by. We don't stop to help, we don't even stop to let someone into the line of parking as we're trying to leave the khutbah, right? Most of us don't want to stop in our busy lives to help anyone when we can. Forget about when we can't. Musa is at the last tip of his energy and there's these two people, but he's a man of initiative. He's not a man that can stand back and watch the world go by. He's not a spectator in the sport. So he jumps in. And when he jumps in, it's not easy. He has to wrestle his, himself to the front of the line and get the water. And finally he gets the water, he gives it to the two women, and then he just goes and crashes on a wall, and he says, Rabba inni lima anzalta illa min khayrin fakir. Oh Allah, I am in need of whatever good you can give to me. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us good and that He accepts our prayers and forgives us our sins. Idhu Allah yagfilukum dhanubukum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praises for Him. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of all the worlds. Wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasul kareem. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We're talking about a ayah in the Qur'an, a single ayah in the Qur'an. The dua Musa alayhi wa made when he was absolutely exhausted and he had spent his last amount of energy in his effort and he made the dua Rabba inni lima anzalta illa min khayrin fakir. Oh Allah, I am truly in need of whatever good you can bestow upon me. This is not a dua we, we should hold back and just use when we're in trouble. Right? We could wake up in the morning and say, Oh Allah, I'm in need of any good you can give to me this day. Right? We can make it in the evening. We can make it if we're having an argument with our spouse. Right? This is not just to be used at the end of our rope. But Musa did use it at the end of his rope and there are some lessons in this 
that I just want to talk about briefly. First of all, the first lesson is how Allah provides for us. How He answers our, even the du'as we don't make. Right? Forget about the du'as we make. How Allah answers the du'as we don't even make with our lips, but we have a tamanna, a feeling, a desire in our hearts. We make du'as sometimes thinking that, Oh Allah, give me money. And then a doorbell should ring and I should go and answer the door and there should be bags of money sitting in my front door. Oh Allah, make me pious. And instantly I should memorize the entire Qur'an and I should be on the path and my beard should be growing and that's it, I'm done. But Allah plans for us and He's the best of planners. The feeling Musa Islam had in his heart, Oh Allah, I need some help. And he gives him a situation where there's two people who need more help than Musa Islam needed. Now if it's us, and we don't recognize that situation, then we miss something. Oh Allah, give me money, and the next moment, I lose my job. If we don't recognize that maybe Allah made me lose my job, so I can go out to get a better job, and I can make more money. Right? That's how Allah is answering the dua. Oh Allah, make me pious, and the moment I try to be pious, some situation comes in front of me that is a great opportunity for me to be not pious, but if I just resist, Allah has answered my dua, He's given me taqwa. Right? So Allah is the best of providers. He's the one who decides how to answer even the duas we don't have the power to make with our lips. The next is initiative. Musa al-Islam is a man of initiative. And we should be men and women of initiative. Initiative means we don't spectate, we don't watch, we don't wait, we don't just sit back and say someone else will solve that problem. You know there's a story of Abu Bakr radilan. Who paid Abu Bakr radilan to run the Muslim empire? Abu Bakr radilan becomes Khalifa, the Prophet Muhammad passes away on Monday. Abu Bakr becomes Khalifa by Tuesday, by Wednesday, Everyone has sworn uh, allegiance to him. Thursday morning, Abu Bakr Radian is in the marketplace and he's buying and selling goods. Umar Radian comes to him, says, What are you doing? He says, I have to feed my family. I'm buying and selling goods. Umar Radian takes him from his hand. Now, who's the Khalifa here? Abu Bakr is Khalifa. He's in charge. Umar Radian takes him from his hand and pulls him and says, Come with me. They go in front of Ali Radian. And he says, Umar says, We need to pay him. This is serious work. Islamic work is not a joke. It's not for the, only the volunteers. It's good if volunteers do it, but people need to be paid to do good Islamic work. We need professionals. If we are expecting an Abu Bakr to lead us, we need to pay an Abu Bakr. So they decide on a salary. What was it? Just small stuff? 300 dinars, which at that time was a lot of money for the year. And half a sheep a day. Half a sheep a day. Not even a week passes. Umar goes to the masjid, there's two women arguing about something. He's like, why are you here? We're waiting for the Khalifa. Umar looks around, there's no Khalifa. Umar Radian goes to the marketplace. Abu Bakr's in the marketplace, he's buying and selling. Now, what are you doing? What you're paying me is not enough. Umar Radian takes him from his hand. Says, come with me. They go in front of Ali and they increase his wage and they give him a full sheep a day. Now you might be wondering why a full sheep a day? Well, who eats a full sheep a day? Abu Bakr radiyan, at that time, there was no salads. There wasn't a whole lot of rice and, and uh, bread that they would eat with their meals. There wasn't fridge, right? There was no refrigerators that you would just store leftovers from last night. You had large families and you had a lot of guests. But the point here is not how much was given, but the fact that they were ready to give the professional the most experienced, the best person for the job, 
they were ready to give him what he deserves in payment so that he could do his job. We are struggling now as a Muslim community because we don't even develop professionals and professionals don't go into any field of Islamic work because they know there's no money in it to begin with. How are they going to feed their families? So if we want the Abu Bakrs to be there to lead our communities, we need to be ready as a community to sacrifice the money to pay for those Abu Bakrs. And the real point here was initiative. Umar Radian didn't say, oh, you're in the marketplace, you have to feed your family. All right, I've got to feed mine, let me go along my way. Right? Umar Radian is not the Khalifa, but he's the one taking the Khalifa to make this decision. Right? Initiative. Musa al-Islam could have let the people fight, but he wanted to get involved to stop them. Right? Musa al-Islam could have let the ladies go without water. There was nothing pressuring him. He himself was in need. But no, he got involved. And we need to get involved. And the last point is persistence. Pers persistence is a quality that you have to develop. It doesn't just come naturally. Right? Sometimes you try to do something, Musa al-Islam stands up to try to help the women. It's not like the men just left the well. No, they fought him. But he needed to be persistent to succeed. It is a quality of Muslims. There's other parts in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, outdo them in persistence, in patience, in sabr. And if you look at our history, we are a nation of persistence. The proof of that is, where are the Mongols? You know those powerful Mongols that swept across Central Asia, and destroyed the entire eastern part of the Muslim Empire. They almost made it to Jerusalem. But where are they now? Where is their sky god that they used to worship? Is that what they worship in Samarkand and Bukhara even today? No. The persistence of the Muslims came back and we won again. Where are the Crusaders? The Crusaders came and ravaged Jerusalem, Syria, they ravaged all of that land. And today, a handful of them over about 60 years have poured trillions of dollars into Palestine to try to just hang on to a land that's less than nine miles in one part. I mean, if I was a Zionist, I'd be very disappointed that after 60 years and trillions of dollars, all I can hang on to is less than nine miles. And even in that nine miles, I'm worried. That would be a huge failure on my part. Not a success. Where are the British? They took over India, destroyed it, destroyed our teachers. In one narration they said 50,000 teachers of Delhi were launched from cannons and killed. So where are these powerful British today? In Birmingham and in London, Muslims are dominating the cities and our persistence is paying off. It is our persistence and our initiative that wins the day. Not our weapons, not our cunning, but our persistence in doing the right thing. We have in this coming two, three weeks, a huge event in our community, and that is the election. And some of us are bored. And some of us are tired of hearing about it. And some of us don't want to go and vote. We need people of initiative to take themselves, take their families, take their neighborhoods, and go and vote. I can't tell you who to vote for, but I will persistently tell you to be people of initiative and to take this opportunity to express your views, your vote, into trying to make a change. It won't be easy. It might not even work. But if you don't try, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be people of initiative and persistence and to help us 
in all of our needs. Allahumma gfirli wal muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat ala hiyamin wal amwat inna ka samiyyum wajibu dawat Allahumma salla ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid Allahumma baraka ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama baraka ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid ربنا عطينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار إباد الله servants of Allah إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة indeed Allah orders us to be just and to excel in what we do be generous and to take care of our family and relatives وينها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض never do what is forbidden of all sins and do not transgress يا زكوم لا لكم تذكرون he Almighty advises you so you can remember وأقيم الصلاة